Green Deer is this huge lake, 22nd largest lake in the world. It's situated between the 57th and 58th parallel of latitude, 300 miles across to the Church and Bay, New York factory. I discovered Green Deer ba Lake back in 1949. The first time I flew into it, I caught a 12-pound lake trout off the pontoon of my aircraft. At that time, I decided that it would be an ideal spot for American fishermen to come up and fish. So I came down to the United States and interested a group of sportsmen into promoting and building a lodge up in this large lake. Now, because it's so far up, we knew that we had to have fast transportation in order to get our guests up there and back. So we had built the, lo the lodge, and then we built an airstrip two and a half miles away from the lodge in order to accommodate our DC-3 aircraft coming in. Our guests come in from Los Angeles, Dallas, Chicago, New York, all various spots in the United States. They come into Minneapolis-St. Paul, and here they board our charter aircraft. We leave every Saturday, fly through to Kenora, Ontario, then across Lake Winnipeg to the Paw, from the Paw on up through to Reindeer Lake, landing at our airstrip. We have wonderful goose hunting over in the York Factory area, which is 302 miles. Reindeer is a huge lake, 210 miles long, approximately 40 miles wide. This is the location of Arctic Lodges, our airstrip, our first outpost camp over here in Vermilion Bay. There are 94 rivers coming into Reindeer and over 5,000 islands. You know with all these islands that it's impossible to be weathered in for even an hour. All they have left now is the memories of that week up at the lodge. This Reindeer Lake, 210 miles long. The PBY is sitting at the dock Here are Johnson Motors. We have two motors for every boat that we send out on the lake. We believe that in case of an emergency, you should have an extra motor in order to return to the lodge. This is a late evening scene. Cabins coming up in the background. All of our cabins are built out of logs. We had a great deal of difficulty getting logs long enough to build the cabins any size. Every log and every cabin was hauled out of the bush by dog team. We have hot and cold running water, wall sinks in every cabin. This building you see there now, we have showers and modern toilets. Cabins are designed so that each party has their own cabin. They want to take and have a real party, well that's up to them. They're not going to bother anybody else. Our lounge, our dining room and kitchen are all separate buildings. There are no sleeping quarters in the lounge or dining room building. This lodge is situated on a group of islands Regardless of what way the wind blows, we can always sneak out and fish. Here you see a fair wind blowing, and yet the water is relatively calm. We have never been windbound for even an hour. This is the next morning, and here you see the boys heading out for a day's fishing. Two people to a boat, and a guide for every two people. These boats are 16 feet long and they're 70 inches wide. Styrofoam packed. It's impossible to sink one of them. This is typical of the country. Rock outcrops rising for 100 to 200 feet. Long, narrow channels. The lake itself is 40 miles wide. And we have counted over 5,000 islands on the lake. Here a number of the boats are gathered. They're going to have a shore lunch, and they're just doing a little fishing before the 
shore lunch is completed. All surface fishing, all using light tackle. We estimate that we catch a fish on every second cast. Now the guides have the shore lunch ready. Some of the fellows have a particular fish that they think might be a little tastier than some others, so they take and get them out of their box. This fellow's picking out a landlocked salmon trout he thinks might be rather nice to eat. There's a red Sanders, coach of UCLA. Looking north, it's exactly 110 miles to the north end of the lake. This is Forrest Evashevsky and his two sons, Jim and Frosty. Now, we very seldom ever allow three people to fish in one boat. Now, where a father has a couple of boys, he naturally prefers to have the boys with him. So in that case, we waive our rule. This is a 21-foot freighter canoe. These canoes are very stable. A lot of our guests prefer to fish in the, st in the uh, freighter canoes. We're fishing for lake trout on the lake trout reefs. Probably fishing in about 15 to 20 feet of water, although it's all surface fishing. These three in just a little over an hour caught 69 lake trout. The temperature would run in the neighborhood of 65 to 70 as a general rule during the summer, although it can drop off to as low as 35 or 40. Most of the time, the guide takes the fish off of the hook Levashevsky always wanted to take off his own fish. And he's not too concerned whether he loses it or not because there's another one just all set to take its place. Forrest was a real good fisherman. Believe me, he's as good a fisherman as he's a coach. You'll find if you're two fishing in a boat that when you hit the school of trout that you'll generally hit one, two, Repeatedly. That's an average size lake trout. That would run in the neighborhood of about four to five pounds. You'll catch maybe 20 of these, and then be, you'll come up with something in the neighborhood of 10 to 15 pounds. Our largest lake trout we caught last year was 54 pounds, three ounces. We had a great many caught from the size 30 to 40 pounds. You'll find that the landlocked salmon trout and the lake trout frequent the same reefs. It's rather odd that you should catch a lake trout and then a landlocked salmon trout right alongside of it. Notice how clear this water is. Reindeer has 94 rivers running into it, and the flow comes from the north to the south. And in late July, you'll still find ice up at the north end of the lake. The chap in the plaid jacket that you just saw there was Paul Zimmerman, the sports editor of the Los Angeles Times. Paul has been up fishing on reindeer twice, and he's coming back again for the third time. All of these fish were caught in the last half to three quarters of an hour. You know, it's surprising when you're out on a nice day in the scented woods, just how hungry you can get. Well, these boys, they just never gave up. They fished from early in the morning until midnight. 
Here's young Fostick bringing in a lake trout off the shore. You notice the battle that they put up. I think it's due to the extremely cold water. Nobody pays any attention. It's just another fish that's being brought in. He's well caught. This is Alec Cook, one of our guides. Alec is a very good guide. He knows the lake. In fact, he was born on the lake. His forefathers came over to this country with the Northwest traders. And the traders came into the country. They married with the local Crees, the local Eskimos. And now you'll find that all of the Indians, they carry the name of the traders. you find Cooks and Ducharms, McCullums, I remember meeting an Indian up there by the name of Jock McCollum. He was a big black Indian boy. We have electricity at the camp. We don't encourage anyone to shave, though. Forrest has taken a week off from coaching, so he says to heck with it. This is landlocked salmon trout, probably the favorite of most of the guests. A lot of the guests take and use, uh, they plank the, the fish, others use foil, bake them in foil. One of the nice things about reindeer, you catch your trout on the lake trout beds, the great northern pike over in the bays of the river mouths. This is one of the northerns. He throws it back. What's he going to do with it? And this day they caught 45, all over 15 pounds. Actually, these fish are not hurt. They'll turn around and they'll bite again. Here's a big fellow, watch him turn. Look at that mouth on him. They are very sharp teeth. Our guides use a glove to, to land these fish. We use nothing except artificial lures. The reason we have the concentration of large northerns so when the big northerns come in to feed, all the little ones go out. And you will come up with a great number of big fish in a very short period of time. That particular gaff hook is a spring-type gaff hook, and we try and catch the fish behind the fins. And... Uh, while it doesn't apparently damage them too badly, it does allow us to bring them in. Here again, we're using light tackle. All of these fish are running from 15 to 30 pounds. There's a 15 pounder. This guide is not only a good fishing guide, but he's an excellent moose hunter. I've seen him sit along the shoreline and call moose in, and he can really call them. This is a typical example of how not to land a fish. We lose a great number of big fish simply because they're not played out by the time they come up to the boat. He's just dying to take over that rod. There it is. That would run somewhere between 25 and 30 pounds. They won't throw that one back. That'll be taken in and they'll take pictures of it.
In this area, during the winter, the caribou, caribou come down from the north. They literally come in by the thousands. You'll find them out on the ice at night. They dig holes in the snow and lie down right up against the ice itself. And they do that for protection against the wolves. Here's another big one. That's a big daredevil. We find that they're very effective. There it is. This is a weed bed. You'll notice a few of the weeds hanging on that big fish. These fish put up a terrific battle. The flesh, flesh is very firm. All of our guides are fellows that were either born on the lake or have lived there for a number of years. And just to be able to find your way around Reindeer Lake is a feat unto itself. We hire our guides on the basis of, one, do they know the lake? Are they good boatmen? Are they clean? And are they reliable? And if they fill that bill in that order, then they're guides. And a 15-pounder. Our fishing generally starts at 8 in the morning, and you can fish right through until midnight. In June and July, we have about a half to three quarters of an hour of darkness. We serve meals from 8 o'clock in the morning until 12 at night. We feel that it's your week up there, so why should you have to take and leave good fishing, say, at 9 o'clock at night just to get back for a meal? Get along at night now. This will be about 10 o'clock at night. We're all ready to call it a day. This is Mel Ellis, the editor of the Milwaukee Journal, fishing for Artie Grayling. The Artie Grayling is a very elusive fish, although in reindeer we're finding more and more of them in the lake. They're very, very colorful you notice the large dorsal fin. With all the rivers coming into the lake, the grayling have come right in, and the fishing year after year is becoming increasingly better. They fight right to the last drop of the hat. Now, he thinks he's got this fish, but watch it get away. The world's record for grayling is four pounds. We have come close to that, but on a general rule, a pound and a half to three pounds is a very good size grayling. We developed a technique for fishing these uh, fish, and that is to use light spin tackle and take and troll along 30 to 40 feet from the shoreline, cast into the shore, and then retrieve slowly. Of course, the fly fisherman has a field day in the evening when the grayling come up to catch the hatches. Pound per pound, the grayling is rated as one of the better fighters. There's another fisherman over in a bay. 
around three miles away from camp. There's a landlocked salmon trout. Notice the very pink fins that it has. They run anywhere from about four pounds up to 19. That fish is just almost too big for the net. Maybe 28 or 30 pounds of fish. The guide standing there, his name was Joshua. Joshua just loves to go out and bring in big fish. Last year he set the record for grayling fishing. He could bring in grayling when no one else in the lake could even find them. This one's going back. It's too small. 17 pounds. Around 5 or 6 o'clock in the evening, the boats start returning. And then they start unloading the, the big fish. You'll find that every boat will have 5 to 6 fish, 20 or 25 pounds. Occasionally one comes in with a 35 or 40 pounder. Then they hang them up and the pitches are taken. If you've got a big trophy fish, it's frozen, sent back with you. We fillet all of the fish that you want to take back. Quick freeze them if you want them quick free frozen, or we can send them back fresh. They go back in the same aircraft that you return to the Twin Cities on. There's the scene of the lodge, all the cabins along the shoreline. Right across from the camp itself, we have what we call a, a guide island. Here the guides have brought their families in from all over the lake. They all have their husky dogs, and there's a little village set up. These dogs are chained up all summer long. All they have to eat is one fish. Now these fish are not clean, it's just the way they come out of the lake. And that's the way they go after them. Bones, scales, there's nothing left in about five minutes. The Indian values his dog, it's his only means of transportation up there in the winter time. They get to be big, Five or six dogs can take and bring in around 800 to 1,000 pounds of fish or, or material on the uh, toboggan swing. This is a moose hide that they're preparing. In the winter time, they live practically off the caribou. They'll make moccasins or jackets out of that moose hide. This little girl is half Indian and half Cree, Cree, with a little bit of Eskimo thrown in. As a matter of fact, I believe her mother is a full-blooded Eskimo. These dogs are part wolf. Some of the Indians live like this all winter long in tents. This is Saturday afternoon, and all our guests are on board the PBY. They're on their way back to civilization. 
They've had their week up in the wilderness. Now they're going back to tell their friends about Arctic Lodge on the fringe of the Arctic Circle. 